year is 1993. Based on the memoir of the same name, this marks Soderbergh's first attempt at writing an adaptation. Some of the usual suspects return both in front of and behind the camera. That's Ron Vorteris, the hotel manager, who you may remember as the therapist in Sex, Lies and Videotape. David Jensen returns as the mail clerk. The father is played by Jerome Crabay, who you may remember from Kafka. Cliff Martinez returns to score. And Soderbergh himself returns to edit. And there's also some new recruits. The photographer this time is Elliot Davis, whose warm look helps the feel of early 1930s summer. The production designer is Gary Futkoff, and he would work with Soderbergh again on two other films. In terms of acting, Spalding Gray plays Mr. Mungo, who Soderbergh cast after reading one of his books. The character of Ben is played by Joe Crest, who has the distinction of being in the most Soderbergh films. And last, and definitely not least, the first assistant director is Gregory Jacobs, who would work with Soderbergh for the rest of his career. I talk more about the editing of King of the Hill, but Koganada has already made an essay about it on the Criterion disc. So instead, in this episode, I'll be talking more about the cinematography, so don't expect it to be long. King of the Hill is the first film Soderbergh made in the 2.35 ratio, which helps give the film a more grand feel. The use of Dutch angles returns, and it's featured more prominently here than it does in Soderbergh's future films. King of the Hill marks the first time Soderbergh uses the split diopter shot. The effect is used again in the underneath, and I'll explain more about its use in the next episode. When the father announces he's leaving for a job, the camera employs a slow dolly zoom. Models, they don't have any works in sight, but I took two who had works in sight, and I gave one to Manny at the Woodward. This helps us understand Aaron's realization that he's going to be all alone. In the very next scene, where the father tells an interesting backstory. It's done with a shot reverse shot that involves the characters looking directly into the camera. You're a smart boy. You're very smart. I tell you how smart you are. Once when you were less than a year old, your mother was in the sanitarium with consumption and you would cry every night. So the first few times I picked you up and you stopped crying. So I realized you just wanted attention. So the next time you cry, I got a glass of cold water, and I stood over the crib, and I said, you see this? This is a glass of cold water, so you better stop crying, or you'll be sorry. But you kept crying, so I poured the cold water in your face, and you stopped crying just like that. The beginning of the graduation scene is done with only music, a tactic Soderbergh would use in his later films. When Aaron goes to visit his mother at the sanitarium, we start with a medium close-up of him on the train. When he arrives, the conversation between him and his mother is done in extreme close-up, though only once do we see the true distance between them. During the hallucination scene, the film employs a kind of stop-frame effect. It helps establish the low point of Aaron's story, and is accompanied by the flashbacks which showcase a true testament to Soderbergh's skills as an editor. It is also accompanied by Cliff Martinez's ambient sound. After the failure of Kafka, King of the Hill marked a slight return for Soderbergh's career. It was nominated for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, and it showed that Soderbergh was willing to work in any genre. So it seemed that he could do anything from here. But unfortunately, he would be absent for his next film.